Fill her up. You're listening to the Gas Digital Network. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode 27 of no. How Awesome Is This Podcast. We're getting up there. Or is this 25? We did this one earlier. Yeah, I think this is 25. I think we missed we missed releasing this one. Yeah, this you could have heard it way sooner if you just subscribe at GasDigitalNetwork.com. Use promo code JOSTA. Yep. Uh, you get the video on Gas Digital or subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash JOSTA. There's a new weekly metal roundup up. We listen, to the, we listen to Halo Effect. Have you heard that yet? No. Oh, you got to go Are listen they? to the Halo Effect, dude. It's oh, I'll go check them out next. We checked out them. We checked out Unto Others. We're, you know, we're Nick and I were breaking down this week's uh, new videos, new songs. Anyways, thank you for listening to the show today. We watched this crazy movie called Lamb. This movie is wild, dude. A24 <laughs> films, right? They're, they're known for their kind of vibes. That's how you know it's going to be strange as hell. <laughs> Indeed, indeed. And uh, thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Indie Merch Store. Go to IndieMerchStore.com after the podcast today and get yourself some merch, some metal music, some vinyl, some hats. I mean, dude, the, the weather's getting nice out. You see these you see these tank tops, people, sun's out, guns out. <laughs> In more ways than one, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially where you're at. <laughs> Jesus. Um, what about the uh, flip-flops? Right around the corner from the studio, by the way. Not to oh change subject, you know, <laughs> hard left turn, but well, I'm glad I'm glad everybody's all right. IndieMerchStore.com. Use the promo code JOSTA10. Also, thank you to Clocks and Colors if you want some great jewelry. And listen, the the sun's out, so get some sunglasses. Clocks and Colors. Spell it the UK way. C O L O U R S dot com. Use the code G A J A S T A. Gajasta. That's the code. I don't know why. Gajasta. Go <laughs> the link and the code will always be in the show notes. Of course, thank you everybody who's been visiting martyrstore.net. We're crushing it with the with the Jasta Fear Factory tribute shirt with the uh, brown and white different two different colored vinyls for the Jasta album, The Lost Chapters, and of course all the crow, uh, Corpse Grinder and Crowbar restocks. Go to martyrstore.net, M A R T Y R S T O R E dot net and Use the code Easter, but use it soon because it's going to be expired. Last but certainly not least, Seek and Strike Records. I'm so psyched. Orbit Culture's playing the same festival we're playing. No shit. Blue Ridge Rock Fest. That's uh, where is that? That's in oh. Virginia. So go to SeekandStrike.com. Oh, use that. the promo. You should because it's dude. Let me just yeah. I, let me just say there's I can't say who's on the lineup yet, but dude, Google that shit. It, it's good. It's not public yet, and the day splits aren't public yet, but we, we are playing the same day as, as Orbit Culture, hopefully. Uh, and, and, and thank you, because I think we're switching with another band who everybody knows, and it's going to work out perfect. Anyways, thank you, uh, SeekandStrike.com. Go to SeekandStrike.com. Use the promo code JOSTA10. Save 10% off the Orbit Culture vinyl and all the merch. Of course, they have Upon a Burning Body and Wind Covenant and Decayer and so many other great bands. Link is in the show notes. We watched Lamb, Brian, Howard Jones, Charlie Belmore, and myself enjoy the show. How awesome, how awesome, how awesome is this podcast? What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of How Awesome Is This Podcast. This is episode 25. I am joined, as always, by Charlie Belmore, Howard Jones, Brian McKay, and the crew from Patreon, shout out to John Lampinski, Nick Fowler, Matt Yankowskis, Brian Undercoffler, Antonio Reyes, Jake Olszewski, Seth Peters. And if uh, other people join us later, we'll get you a shout out in the next one because we have to talk about the film that we watched entitled Lamb. It centers around the birth of a bizarre. Oh, let me just tell you, spoiler alert. We're, go we're going right into this shit. Cause I don't have time for this shit anymore. All right. Art is dumb. Stop making art. Like this <laughs> we're, no, we're going to, we're going to get into it in a second. I'm, I'm just mad that I had to watch this this weekend when I knew I should have just not looked at any screens. Anyways, the story of lamb centers around the birth of a bizarre human sheep baby hybrid. As Kirk would say, I'm a hybrid <laughs> raised by lonely farmers. The filmmaker's freshman effort asks a simple consciousness stalking question. 
what does this baby look like? Well, we slowly find out as this weird, dark, strange, I don't know, take on parenthood and man's relationship with nature and man's rela- or humankind's relationship with, uh, with animals or with sheep in particular. But um, I will say this, it was shot very well. It's beautifully shot the locations and, and, uh, and everything looks great. The lighting, the sound design there's, there's, I want to try to start positive, <laughs> but then I don't really want to talk about this film. So I'm going to hand it over to Howard Jones right now to just walk us through the beginning of the film, which had so much promise when you're thinking, okay, this is a fucking like a creature stalker movie. There's like the Michael Myers character is, is some sort of demon animal that's breathing and, you know, making these like sounds and you're thinking, Oh, great. They're going to be attacked by this thing. Right. Oh, Howard, you're, mu- you're muted, man. Hold on. How about now? Am I good? Hey, you're good, dude. Sweet. All right. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely promise in the beginning. And then it's like, oh, okay, this is just going to be slow and weird the whole time. <laughs> and <laughs> the movie was I, about an hour and 15 minutes too long. I, um, was. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The pitch meeting was this is how I imagine it going. Guys, we got to make this new movie. We need something cool. You know, people are tired of the fucking comic book shit. We don't want Iron Man five. What do we need more of? And they just all looked at each other like we need less dialogue. We want no dialogue. (laughs) Fuck dialogue. And when we have dialogue, we're going to make it in the fucking weirdest language on the planet. (laughs) I will say I've had screensavers that moved faster than this movie. (laughs) Dude, this movie was slower than a fucking I hate God son O double bill with fucking <laughs> Quaaludes given out at the door. Oh shit. Uh, That's amazing. Oh my shit. This movie everywhere. was slower than no wait, we're not gonna get all right. No, it was it was definitely definitely could have been done in like a very quick short. Yeah. Dude, this movie was slower than Lizzo putting pre-op Get Al on. Roker, pushing pre-op Al Roker up a hill in a wheelchair. That's how slow this movie was. It was. <laughs> you just went for large and black. In that. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, know your audience, I, fool. As Kirk said, I, know your <laughs> I literally only wrote nine notes. The last note just being simply. LOL Ram Man. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that was it. I literally thought I thought it was going to be about like the devil or some horror shit. Turns out it's a PETA ad. No, I, I, wow, I didn't even get that because, well, okay, when she's cutting the ears or whatever they do, whatever that thing is, and she's like very cold and just nonchalant about it in the beginning. Mm I was like, okay, they're trying to send us a message. Great. Now I got to fucking think about this fucking movie. Like I wanted a movie that I didn't really have to think too much. So maybe I just went into this with, you know what? Sometimes you got to go, this ain't for me. It's not made for me. (laughs) I don't know who this movie was made for. Jamie. (laughs) You know who this movie was made for? I feel like this movie was made for like people who wear shirts of bands that they don't know any songs and really the bands aren't good and the bands don't have any fucking hits, but they pretend that they like the band and they pretend that they're RD and they're, you know, and their parents paid for them to go to fucking film school. And, but they act like they're poor, but they live in a fucking, uh, three $3,500 a month apartment. Oh, I know that guy, (laughs) you know, who I'm talking about. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) She, was it Numi? Uh, amazing actress. She was, she was really good at. It. She had to convey a lot with the limited. Say amount her name of again. Say her name again. Was it Numi? Numi. Just... No, is it Naomi? What is it? I thought it was. No, I think it's. Numi? I think I think he's right. It's Icel- yeah. she's Icelandic, so it's like, who knows? 
There's a J in is there. Is there any is there any I'm interview right. footage like you know how when they when when you when you're doing like a, a European interview for like YouTube or something and they're like, all right, say your name and what band you're in or whatever. Do they ever do yeah. that with actresses? <laughs> oh, they do. They do all those dumb press junkets. And so yeah. So there they might be their, they have to say their name. Yeah, it's weird. So they might be footage of her saying it so we know the right way. Has Looking it up. Because that's how I do it. Like if I'm having someone on the show where I'm like, how the fuck? I, I look for like that, you know, Euro interview mm -hmm. where they're like, I'm not fucking up this person's name. So I'm going to make their, them say it. I was reading. I was reading some script for a, uh, you know, for a pharmaceutical company, you know, so I'm, you know, getting paid by the word. And so I had to pronounce all of these pharmaceutical companies and all these drugs. So yeah, all I was doing was, uh, well, me and the producer were just searching for stuff online. Who says this thing and who says it right? So <laughs> dozens of drugs, I'm, I'm saying. And it was nuts. I mean, the whole time I was trying to read the screen, like I was watching it. I'm trying to hear what they're saying and read the screen. And I'm like, I did. I couldn't grab any of it. I couldn't even... I got like, I don't know any sayings. I don't even know. Hello. Like even in Japanese or Chinese, I know. Hello. Goodbye. Some of the things, but you're saying oh, yeah. this was Icelandic. Oh yeah. Don't know any of that, but I've gotten so accustomed to, uh, to just reading subtitles because I've got an Italian in the band and Marco, you know, one of my good <laughs> friends. So yeah, whenever there's English movies, there's subtitles. So I've gotten accustomed to follow that. Whenever yeah, there's this. an Italian in the band, you Lumi have rapaz. to go and get Fruity de Bosco. You have to go to gelato <laughs> and you got to get the Fruity de Bosco gelato. Okay. <laughs> and then we're like, and then you have to ask them what Fruity de Bosco means just so you can hear them say forest fruit. <laughs> All right. Got, what what, what were you going to play, here. Brian? You're going to, you got her saying her own name. Yeah. Wow. No, me rapaz. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. Howard was Hang right. Out. I stand corrected. You're sitting. New, <laughs> <laughs> Numi Rapaz. Okay. What's up, everybody? I want to tell you about an amazing website for staying on top of everything metal. You know them, you love them. Notfest.com. And if you don't know them, you will love them. Just today, I was on the site and I checked out notfest.com slash news. That's where I go. Like when I'm putting together the metal news segment for the weekly metal roundup podcast. So if you want to know about tour announcements, upcoming albums, and everything going on in the metal scene, this is the website for all of your metal-related news and content. Once again, that's NotFest.com for tons of coverage of everything that's going on in metal. Big thanks to NotFest.com. Now back to the show. Back to the, to the film. So, so they're, they're isolated. They're in the middle of nowhere. They're raising these rams. And, and right when this starts, I'm like, great. Now I got to look up. Do the male rams have the horns? Do the female ram? Do they all have the fucking horns? Because I'm thinking, because I knew a little bit about the movie going into it. Because mm -hmm. in the trailer, there's a fucking kid with a sheep face standing there. Right? <laughs> with a baby little, hand. Yeah, little miss sheep face with the baby hands. Little miss. I'm like, the fucking kid better be named Mary. If the kid is not named Mary. <laughs> there's <Was> some... <laughs> Dude, there's so many missed opportunities in this movie. Um, if you were to write a headline with a review of this movie, I would say this movie ain't mutton to fuck with. <laughs> I, I can't dude, I wrote it. I, I wrote so many dad jokes for this movie. Okay, let's let's get serious though. The mutton. <laughs> why why in the beginning that. wasn't why didn't they allude to some sort of interaction with this you know character that we're watching in the first person right mm -hmm. why didn't they allude to something happening all they did was show the lamb walk out and keel over like yeah. it's pregnant or it whatever it was very so, sweaty are you <laughs> are you saying it's like fucking immaculate conception but with this creature what what were no, they go man came in and humped that goat oh yeah how do you know that well because they they make it pretty obvious there was like heavy breathing and then the goats all sweaty afterwards it's a goat it's a goat yeah it's not a lamb well no it's a sheep it's a sheep yeah 
Okay, because the movie would have been called Goat. <laughs> it should have been called Goat. All right, so then we get about 40 minutes in. There's been three lines of dialogue. I said, okay, this is a, uh, this is a drama. Mm-hmm. This is like watching paint dry, although it's beautiful paint, right? It's, there's the photos. Whoever's the director of photography, we should probably give them a shout out. It's, hey, this paint I'm, is day glow. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it really is beautiful. It m- mm-hmm. makes you think, okay, wow, yeah, this is, they're telling a story through yep. photos. You can make anything beautiful with a 4K camera. (laughs) True. Wow. True. But when they signed up to this movie, when everybody, and look, I know it's very hard to make a movie. I've never made a movie. I made one live concert DVD and I wanted to blow my brains out afterwards. So (laughs) I I know everything is hard. The sound, the lights, um, dealing with people, the editing, everything, the audio. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a lot of work. And this looked yeah. like a lot of work. This looked like it wasn't a fun shoot, especially when animals are involved, right? It's cold. Yeah. yeah. And dealing with livestock, that's crazy. Those, I mean, they're domesticated animals, but they're not. Do you train a bunch of them? No, goats suck, dude. Yeah. Like, they, they're not easy to domesticate. You can't just, like, get them to do tricks. They, they just do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> so so they they find the they find the mama lamb and it gives birth to this baby it's got a sheep's head and a human's body correct yeah yeah okay so now they're just in shock <laughs> they're just yeah. speechless and i'm just like you're lying why are you lying and don't don't write me that i don't know good art and that you know <sighs> i'm thinking about this in the wrong way because so- the- I'm telling you, nine out of ten people are on the fucking phone with the Guinness Book right yeah. away, dog. See, Dude. Jamie, I think you're missing the context of the greater world in this movie. How do we know that the world's not like fucking Narnia? Because nobody was like, oh, my God, we have a half goat kid. Let's get to the press and do all this other shit. They were just like, oh, you're keeping that in the house. Now, see, here's what here's where good I point. Was, That's a very I'm good like- point. Thank I'm you. like, what's happening? And then when they're giving this, the things giving birth, they're pulling it out and they're looking. And I just wrote very muted response to something that defies nature and logic. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, what is happening here? But I'm like, oh, wait a minute. At the beginning, they said there's time travel. So I just believe that this is a different world. now. OK. All right. So so and he goes, I don't want to know what the future is if there is time travel. So. Yes, I made a note of that as well. But what I and was that's gonna... immediately when I knew, oh, there's a dead kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, because he got all sad. It was like, oh, yes, of course. You know, go back and talk to her in the past. I'm like, yep, yeah, dead kid. Okay. Uh, hey, guys, I but, hate to, I hate to do this. Um, I'm going I'm going to have to leave because I'm pretty sure I'm having an a, a allergic reaction and both of my eyes are swelling up. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. oh man, what do you eat? This is fucking weird. I don't I didn't eat anything. I had a like I had a vegan protein shake I have every morning and my eyes are like watery as fuck. And I'm like, oh, are I you go. allergic to lamb? I, that's lamb right. chops? I think I'm dude. allergic to bad movies. You got yeah, a dude. in your eye. <laughs> dude, you got hit with a visual lamb chop. Dude, mm-hmm. go get go get like a, a yeah. Don't a fuck shot. with your eyes. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I got a uh, I, I'm, I'm going to go take a thing. I apologize, guys. No worries, man. No oh, problem, man. But yeah, this movie was trash, but somehow it's on the short list for the international Oscars, just so you guys know. Yeah, it was garbage. So whoever directed this is going to be like directing like Superman 3 or something. When the Oscars. Oh, so, no. yes. Oh, boy. But, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I hope you oh, feel better. Good, man. good luck. All right. Love bye. you, bro. See you. All right. So, Valdemir Johnson, Johansson. Oh, uh, listen, <laughs> Valdemir, Valdemir Johansson. It, va- it was a valiant effort, Valdemir. But um, too long, bro. This oh. should have been a stretching it half hour long. Yeah, it, there'll just be things that happen. Like she's been looking out the window for a full minute. Why yeah. do I need this? I and <laughs> and like I didn't need to know. Like, what was the purpose of the brother there? Like flipping like a coin. Right. He was like, oh, that thing's a fucking 
like a cancer on the world. And then the next day he's like <laughs> reading at bedtime stories. And I was just like, <laughs> this yeah. world, I'm missing so much context. I need yeah, to know like, more. I'm going to, I'm going to blow your head off, but you are kind of cute. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So I was thinking, okay, yeah, I was thinking, well, maybe they couldn't have kids and that was understood. And, yeah. and he at, before we get to the story at some oh, point, all their kids lives, were in the backyard. In the gro- <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like Rick and Morty. There was a, buried there was a the grave tree. with th- there was like a graveyard with three graves in it. <laughs> was there? Oh. Yeah, and there was oh, one I- of them that said uh, uh, Ada. Or so yeah, they had their dead child. Uh, I missed. That. Okay, I missed it. Good catch, Howard. There was too much oh. not happening in this movie for me to very see easy that. to drone out on this, but I'm yeah. like. Oh, I got to pay attention to this because she's a pretty well-known actress, especially overseas. So I'm like, if she's yes, in this, huge. there's got to be something behind this. And then it ended. And you're like, you know, we all have missteps. <laughs> so, well, uh, <laughs> well, the was there some sort of biblical thing involved with this? And I when don't the, think when, so. When the brother gets dropped off. You know, I mean, another I, another missed opportunity. Like, why wasn't Lamb of God playing in the car when the car? So I don't <laughs> think there was like 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 biblical mystic stuff involved because nobody in freaked out when nobody freaked out when they saw the goat man. I mean, to be fair, they didn't really see him too much, but like you'd think you'd have a stronger reaction than like, so yeah. Why did they wait to show him? Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't the, well, I guess they wanted you to think it was like the devil, some horror shit going on the whole time. Turns out it's just fucking the West Coast of Narnia. <laughs> this this would have been better as a, as a graphic I novel no- or something. <laughs> well, they, they're retractable, Howard. It's how animals work. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, lamb, lambs age fast. Right. They, they mature at six months. So I was thinking, OK, if this is some sort of purgatory and they're just like, you know, going through the motions, they're just restless. And it's, um, you know, if this is some Narnia type universe where it's similar to Iceland in a way there it doesn't ever get dark. Right. Mm. So and you, also there's goat people and that and it fucks with your mind. Right. When it doesn't get dark. Are you hallucinating? Are you, um, are, are, I don't know. I was like, what is the point of this? What, spent, what is the message? I spent a week in Alaska when it didn't get dark at all. Yeah. And yeah, I cut, it was fucking weird. Yeah, it, it definitely, um, it kind of messes with your uh, circadian rhythm. Is, is this it, just, is this just a cautionary tale? Like, just don't, um, steal nature or don't you know take nature or take something that you don't understand even though it's like partly something you understand and can communicate with right because the thing can't the thing can't talk human talk right not really it 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 understood english but yeah but so does a dog iceland and like a dog in chile i I don't think there was uh i can't I can't withdraw some sort of deep meaning from this. I can't. The uh, the deepest meaning I could gather was this dude is some sort of a fucking animal advocate, and this was an hour and 40-minute ad for PETA, and uh, <laughs> they were just like, this is what happens when you kill fucking goats, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get a goat man to murder your husband and steal your baby and leave you alone in the middle of nothing. I mean, Lamb is a, you know. If he was like the devil or something, you'd think he would have, like, ripped the dude apart or thrown him in hell. Not shot him with his own fucking gun. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it was pretty, uh, pretty cool looking creature. Yeah, it was all right. It it looked cool. I expected more fire and brimstone. Yeah, it, it just, it moves slow and the payoff was oddly muted. Yeah. And her reaction at the all the way at the end, where she's just like, "Huh, yeah, I guess like, that's okay. it." 
Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'm just to assume that she just tied it all together. It's like you, you have to take some extreme stretches and man, you, you don't want to say it's a bad movie, you know, but it wasn't the best movie. I, I just was... feel like I feel like not building the origin and not building the universe is a cop yeah. out or a way of like saving money. I don't I don't look at it as like. Oh, it's I and I hate that when people do like, oh, it's open to anybody's interpretation. No, that's when that's what fucking pop artists say when they're trying to cast the widest web and they don't care about niche and they just want to grab anybody and everybody. Yeah. Right. And sort of like uh border. There's it, there's some similarities in some ways to to border, but it's like they're both from the same comp A twenty four made both of those movies. This just didn't grab me like yeah. border did. Yeah, they can't all be uh, hereditary, right? Like Border wasn't hereditary, but it was good in a different way. And it was, sh again, shot really well. Mm -hmm. Really, really mm -hmm. talented actors and a fucking batshit crazy story that they yeah. paint in a, in, in a mm -hmm. serious fashion where you're taking it like you're the suspension of disbelief is there. Whereas with this, you're I'm just picturing them every time they yell cut going, what did we sign up for? What are we doing here? Like what? And then they have yep. to go back into being like, I care about this little baby, you know, doll with prosthetics. And it's just, there was no surprise or there was barely any startling moment. The when surprise the was disappointment. Was what? How do you just accept this? And don't immediately, like, yeah, I need to take a lot of photos of this thing. <laughs> but they, but they didn't show any. They, they aside from her tagging and clipping the ears, they didn't show any violence toward the animals, did they? They didn't show any exploitation she killed, of the animals. She killed the mother. Yeah. I but, mean, she, no, I'm talking was... about. I'm talking about in the story building in the beginning. No, well, they weren't bad. They weren't like bad people. They weren't like but, torturing their animals. They, they but is right. that the message? Is that the message? Like just, just being in that business and just being I, I on that, that land was part is, of the message. Is bad enough? Yeah, I think that's what they were trying to say. Which once dude, again, I, I mean, listen, there's some thirty days, seconds to thirty minutes. Look, I have I, I have three dogs, and there's some days where it's like brutally fucking cold, like today, where it's like you know four degrees out, and they they get cabin fever they get stir crazy and and you know that first floor that w that they're on it's not a lot of rooms it's like whatever four or five rooms and they're confined to three and so sometimes i do think that it's not fair and i wish that we lived in a warmer place where they could just run free all day every day all year but it's not making me like feel this guilt or or shame i'm just like it's unfortunate whereas when this movie are you supposed to look at these rams that are in this small confined space and be like, that is wrong. And now God is sending a message so that this baby makes you have compassion and makes you see that because of the human body on this lamb baby, you're going to see now what you're doing is wrong. I, I don't know. I don't think that I, was it. I have a hard time thinking that deeply with something that truly can't happen. <laughs> yeah <laughs> right you can't make that thing so well I can't, i'm don't sure fucking say I'm that sure there's a laboratory somewhere <laughs> yeah i i i have a hard time getting the uh you know getting the message and the and you know look just the deep meaning behind it when it's just like you can't make that the, the you, meaning was you can't even mix you can't mix human with with eight let alone a ship so it's just I, I, I'm not going to get the moral of the story when there's when this is obviously the biggest of fiction. And I I watch anime. I'm cool with fiction, but <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, Here, here's just... here's a question from the chat. Then Antonio what? Reyes says, "Would you have the same reaction if it was animation or anime? Because it fits more to that level. Because you're all right, and it's the norm there. Here, <clears throat> uh, hard to say. There's still so much missing from the story." Right. Yeah. Like There's, no matter what medium it was told in, it would still be the same story. It, it, it the world is missing in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. There's that's There's, the main issue. There's a lot 
unanswered. And, and so to me, it's just hard to follow. And you just, you have to take these big leaps and the very first one is believing this, believing the nonsense, but it, it, you know, and that's part of the movie. That's fine. But it, it just makes it harder to take a, a moral from the story. It's just a peculiar movie to me. Yeah. They definitely took a swing and missed with the, with the whole morality push in this movie. Yeah, I think I'm, it, you, it, it's hard to look into that because you just want to see what you're seeing. It was like, show me more of the, show me more of the, of the lamb girl. So <laughs> you know? I looked up somebody's review of the movie and they said that it was, uh, nature's nature taking revenge on people who exploit it and that's when i went oh man oh so you mean <laughs> the happening yeah oh but it was it was wow. better than the happening <laughs> it was better i you know what i will give you that you're right because we didn't have mark going it's the plants it's the trees or whatever the fuck you were like wait what? <laughs> and, um, and to be fair the most like the tensest moments in the happening where the wind blowing where in this one, there's at least some fucking goats with badass <laughs> metal horns, you know? Well, or actually, you know, diving in front of a, a ride on mower was pretty hard. That was a hard kill or, Very hard. or like, right. Or like just I because at times, well, I haven't watched it. I mean, to, I've seen it, but I haven't watched it in years. So, so well, watch watching remember. both of these movies wanted to make me dive under a, a lawnmower. So you know. <laughs> some of the self endings in that movie were pretty creative. I will say that. Yeah. Um, do you think this movie can be watched by someone whose, you know, life is no. is very uh, content and they don't have stress and other opportunities? Like, is it is it just because we have too much input output and we have too many other things going on that we can't sort of really sit and enjoy the scenery and think deeper about the the underlying meaning of of each sort of act? The casual person who's on TikTok is not going to get 20 minutes through this movie. <laughs> Fair enough. Because <laughs> the, the whole first 20 minutes, I'm like, yo, get, where's David Attenborough? Like, get somebody <laughs> in here. Narrate this shit. Do something. And I'm not, I'm not even like the type of dude that wants CGI or, or explosions or anything. Mm -hmm. But I kept it, I, in my gut, knowing only the trailer and only one little paragraph from the wikipedia i kept going you blew it you blew it you you could have fucking you could have expanded this universe you could have built the origin story there could have been some history of this happening before because this is obviously this guy's area where he you know looks to um procreate and keep his um hybrid race going i mean there's just so many things that they could have done yeah yeah. And instead they left a lot of it unexplained and you had to use your own imagination. I think you had to use too much of it. And they it's like they relied on the physical or, or just like the special effects like too much. There was not enough story. That's what it felt like. Or like when his brother getting tossed out of that car and everything, no explanation other than other than them saying, oh, you, what, the, you know, like alluding to him owing money. It's like you, you get no explanation. And after the movie, I was like, all right, don't be so harsh. Let's go read another review that could maybe inform what you're feeling and help you verbalize it better. So you don't just shit on, you know, a piece of art that a lot of people worked very hard to create. So, yeah. I scroll down to Bleeding Cool. I don't know Bleeding Cool. I don't fre frequent the site, but um, the review was written by someone named Caitlin Booth. Sorry, Caitlin, if you hear this, but I just read the headline or just read the, uh, yeah, I read the headline and the first line in the, in the review. The headline was, this is A24 at its most A24, and it's awesome. So I was like, oh, awesome is not a word I would use for this movie. Um, Negative. Then the, the first line is, Lamb is unexpected in the best possible way, beautifully shot, wonderfully acted, uncomfortable, but not in a queasy way while also being weirdly sweet. And I was like, weirdly sweet. I mean, yeah, they, they, they're watching TV and she's, 
they're having like a, you know, loving embrace with a little lamb baby hybrid. And there's other scenes that I guess are kind of endearing, but not like. Yeah. Like when he, when the lamb didn't get shot, that was very uh, endearing. The whole movie, I thought it was like mm -hmm. a fucking, you know, Rosemary's baby situation. I thought that it was just like the devil's baby. And that's the reason why everybody eventually loved it is because, you know, the, the, unc that's what I thought. I was like, this is going to be so cool. Turns out mm -hmm. it was way fucking less cool than I thought. <laughs> yeah. And in this bleeding cool review, bleeding cool.com review, there's one part of the review where it says that, um, this is one of those movies where the, the inspiration is drawn from folklore, but I feel like folklore is rich in the story building and universe building and at least um the area also kind of plays a part which this could have done more of if we mm -hmm. knew if we knew is it really iceland or is it oh yeah that looked a like a different iceland. world with some sort of oh, history yeah. or or like is it a place that's sitting on some sort of, you know, mineral deposit that causes deformities or causes these hybrid beings to, I don't know. I don't know. Is that too much it, to ask? I think you're, I think you're looking for looking too far into it. I, okay. I, I, yeah. I think, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't. Oh, Howard's over. Howard's done with the movie. He's like, fuck this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I, I just, I just think that, I mean, you know, maybe if we were Icelandic, it would hit harder. Because we'd have stories of goat men in our childhood, you know. But there's yeah, a like lot I, of nine I out of tens. There dude. Was... There's a lot of nine out of tens. In yeah, what? I assume there was some reviews involved. Oh, yeah. I I really I assume that had something to do with it. Yeah. And everything else. It just we're missing cultural context a little mm -hmm. bit. I would imagine. And I don't know if that would um, change the fact that it it didn't suck me in. It didn't. Uh, sure. I mean, there's. I was definitely paying attention and everything, but just more than the us. payoff wasn't huge for me. Right. The payoff was fucking not, like lame. It was the lamest it could have been in the whole situation that it was. Maybe that was their goal. Maybe their goal was to get everybody like, "This is fucking gonna be great. It's gonna be the apocalypse at the end of the movie." Turns out, it's just the end of the day. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's like it felt muted to me the whole thing yeah. felt kind of muted and so and like, I'm, look I'm i'll also, still i'll still watch his other movie the the one um with the kids where i guess it's like a, a supposedly it's in the middle ages where the where a young boy discovers a different sort of mysterious creature i was like all right i'll check it out maybe you this know was his that is it's like i can get or in I, I don't know how to pronounce it all um, right. but but i've enjoyed artsy slow movies before like i liked the witch i liked um i guess it's not that slow but hunt for the wilder people or wilder people i never that saw was, that I that was okay movie. um i mean the witch was a little slow but so is a lot of the classic horror movies like rosemary's baby's not like fast moving exorcist isn't fast moving you know it's like mm -hmm. Yeah, but but, this, but a lot of stuff is happening in those movies. You know, yeah. this movie is missing stuff. Yeah, it was. And, it yeah. was like a, you were watching Discovery for a while, you know, because you're just seeing a lot of work on the homestead. And I just like, I didn't understand why they put the gratuitous sex scene in there. I don't understand the the drama with her brother. I mean, his brother. Like it all felt so unnecessary with zero payoff for the story where it's just like, all right. Was, this, mm -hmm. was the sex scene to say like, look, we're just animals too. And we have a drive to procreate or a drive to. Um, Do people you know, really think with that much. Like, like every, with everything has to have this meaning behind it. Yeah. Do, you, do they really think that? Sometimes. I mean, wow. especially in an artsy fucking movie like this. Like, the rule is like, you know, every, every shot has is telling you some part of the story. So it's like, we just and felt what, so and fucking what if unnecessary. Shot told me that she's and what if, okay with, uh, with nudity on camera. Other than that, I didn't yeah. see the point. What? Okay, so... I mean, you noticed the grave, so there you go. Like that, yeah. Changes that changes it a little bit. I had, if, I if it's a grief, part. a grief-stricken couple or a couple that can't have kids, 
I'm not saying that that's similar, but it still sets up the sort of doomy vibe. They both would yeah. set up um, the the hopelessness uh, in a way, right? At least they're similar in that way. But the, I guess you'd have to say the the other message is what? Like, don't wear wool? Like, what, what are the other messages? I think it was more of a don't eat meat. I think it was more like a, like we're all somebody's kid. I think that was the ultimate goal. Okay. <laughs> kid. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Cause at this point I just want answers. So I'll take yours. I, 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 that's what I got from it. I was like, Hey, cause, cause what happens is, is she takes the baby and then kills the mom. Right. Which is the goat man's, uh, sp- spouse side let's piece say, mm-hmm. right let's let's go with that right so <laughs> side pieces <laughs> yeah then uh so what she does to the goat gets mirrored to her by the goat man right yeah. so Karma. she kills the kills the goat man's spouse Biblical, eye for an eye and takes its baby so he kills her husband and takes the baby mm-hmm. i think but that, we could have like, got to that 15 in minutes not, in 85 yeah. minutes in 85 in this hour and 40 hour and 45 minutes. When did you feel something for the two stars that who took from the, you know, took the, the, the whole time, baby, I'm waiting for the I, devil I felt to show nothing up. Nothing for them. I wasn't connected to anything they were saying or doing. Nothing. So it's, yeah. It's just the, <laughs> and, and that's the and that's the message. That's the message of the film. It's like everybody's out there just living their lives, doing things disconnected, and they don't realize the weight of their choices, especially when it comes to nature and animals. And um, everything has uh, it's it's karma coming to them, and that there's always some sort of uh. Force price. Of, force of yeah force of retribution out there depending on the on uh, on your on your sin right Guys, or, i feel or, like we figured it out or did someone just refuse to have their material edited <laughs> oh yeah you know what listen listen Coward. valdemir valdemir if you heard it like you know a lot of times when we do these movies the people who've worked on the movies or and and we're a small podcast but somehow they hear about it and they watch it like ryan Kruger. We've been, you know, he he tweeted about us watching. Uh, he he directed uh, Fried Berry. He was Fried so Berry, that. the guy who played yeah. Fried Berry, like tweeted about the show. Unreal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And and the director, about the director wants to come on the podcast, Ryan. And he and we said some good things and some bad things, right about Fried it. Berry. He gets it. He knows it's it's art. It's everybody's got a different opinion. But I look, enjoyed Valdem- Fried Berry. It was weird as it fuck. was great. I <laughs> loved it. I end up liking it a lot more yeah. than I thought. I, would. I the, thought, oh, sorry, I thought I was gonna have to watch this movie again. I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I refused. I, yeah. I just refused. Well, <laughs> yeah, look, I, Valdemir. I need that time. He, <laughs> yeah. he he owes us nothing, right? It's his vision. He's the one who did the pitch. I'm yeah. pretty sure he. I I don't think he wrote it, but maybe he co-wrote it, or maybe he did write and direct it. But look, he got the movie made. He got the funding. This is his vision. He executed it um, well for for, you know, if you're going for this really sort of long, drawn out, dramatic, beautiful piece. But uh, yeah. I just felt like gee, it was it was <laughs> challenging. Yeah. For me, I, I couldn't really. I, especially her acting is amazing, but I, I couldn't invest in the characters and I just. I just didn't feel it. Yeah, because if if she had some sort of regret or some sort of if she was torn with living there and doing what they were doing for a living, she she it was just normal to her. It was just no problem. The thing is like, you know, jolting in her lap while she's cutting it and stabbing it and pricking it or whatever the hell they do. And that's you know, a lot of farmers lives is like nothing is gross. They've seen way worse shit like you ever see a horrible accident and there's people on the side of the road and they're freaking out. And then there's just that one motherfucker who's, who's like, cover the body. Let's do that. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, usually, yeah. <laughs> usually that person like grew up on a farm. They've seen yeah. way worse shit. Like a guy getting exploded on a motorcycle is like nothing. Just watching a cow birth is 
a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, let's go to the chat. Anybody got a question about this movie or anybody got a comment about this movie? Let's see. Paul Scally says, I couldn't get this anywhere in the UK. Was there any bit where she gives the husband the side eye? Um, no, but you can tell they just kind of have the same mundane conversations because it's a mundane life that they're living in this mundane world where it never gets dark and they do the same thing every day. And, but, but at least show us, like, do you sell the rams? Do you sell them? Do you, do you harvest them for meat? Are you making lamb chops? What is going on? Well, you know, they do what all, all people do with rams, I guess. Make, yeah, it's wool and, wool and meat. But where was there a scene with either of that? They were there's a scene where they're shearing them. They're shearing no. one. Okay, isn't there? I don't. Did I make I that up in my head? Because yeah, there's literally think, nothing. I don't remember seeing that. Movie? I remember it's like, them like okay, washing. It's, it's light all the time. Show the struggle of that. The, you just there's so much not set. It's isolated. At the same for, time, it's beautiful. But yeah, I mean, just convey it somehow in yeah. the story that they're that it's it's that single day uh, because it's light you know was just, it never nighttime in that movie I, I didn't see it i don't think so but but i've watched other movies where they were trying to convey something unsettling throughout the movie whether it was like i've watched movies where you know claustrophobia is a thing i've watched movies where um height is a mm -hmm. thing or um or blindness or deafness or or some sort of other um issue with the main character or the protagonist or the antagonist is uh like this the antagonist is this ram man who we don't see to the very end which i yeah. was like arguably the antagonist is the is her yeah yeah and that's why you don't feel anything for her. It's yeah like, oh, your life's ruined uh but, yeah but i say it acted very well beautiful beautifully shot and everything it's just there's too much unanswered and so that part made me not enjoy it that much there was too much right. art in this movie let, let me ask you if if valdemir hits us up and like look you guys got the movie all fucking wrong you can do better here you go motherfucker here's the rights write a fucking prequel or write a sequel i got it <laughs> okay let me hear it because then i'll tell you mine <laughs> well it would definitely just be the lion the witch in the wardrobe like essentially <laughs> Wow. <laughs> just like a lot, a lot of it would just be the actual world that that movie is set in. So it's just like goat people having cities and animal people everywhere. And it's just the world and the people, the regular people are the weird ones. And that's why they live away from everybody else. OK, fair enough. I, I That's and you know what? That's compelling. So because I was going to say. I would build out the origin story to be that this child only happens like once every 200 years and in this purgatory type of um, realm, when that child is born, they then grow to give you the information or the power or whatever it is need the knowledge to break out of this purgatory type realm. But because there's other realms where these Ram men type people, this other race of hybrid people uh, live, they don't want you invading their realms. So they want to take the kid so that you don't have the access, like kind of like a, not like a son of God type of um, vibe, but something where the kid has a power that has consequence to their existence. Both of them. I think that's the juke of the movie, right? The whole <laughs> movie was trying to, was trying to show us or trying to elude that the devil came in and had a baby with a goat and then that they were raising the devil's baby turns out it's literally a goat man <laughs> I, I mean it's it fucking it, it, it obviously knows how to operate firearms yeah like all of the supernatural stuff besides the actual literal goat man is out the window there's no magic None of that. Goat people exist. That's what I'm getting out of this movie. Because, like I said, when the when the brother came or that other late that other girl was at the house, mm -hmm. nobody went. What the fuck is that? Nobody. Nobody <laughs> went. No what the fuck is that? So it's normal in that universe. It has to be at least acceptable somewhere that there is human 
animal hybrid people. Yeah, because you ain't pulling a trigger with a hoof. That's, that's for sure. Real. And that and that was in my notes. And also, um, he saw her shoot that sheep a while before he said anything. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to make sure she was gone. Like, man, you were keeping that in the back pocket, bro. <laughs> Brian Undercoffler in the chat says Icelandic version of quote unquote son of Bigfoot. Yeah, I mean, son of Big Hoof. <laughs> That's the prequel. Yeah. No, no. If if look, if if Big his Hoof realm, if the ram, if the ram hybrid people, ram human hybrid people, if they live in a realm beyond, you know, that mountain range that the farm is sitting on, and you know, humans can't cross over into it because everything humans touch turns to shit or whatever. That's compelling to me. Fine. Because I'm like, yeah, what is, what is, or if he's just one being and he was isolated somewhere or imprisoned somewhere by humans and he got out and he knew the only way to carry on his genes or whatever was to make another hybrid with this like explain that like oh the only the only way that these hybrids exist is when this one race of hybrids goes and hits a a, a regular sheep at least have the guy gore her <laughs> i mean <laughs> come on why wouldn't you use your horn i you mean he you shot know? him <laughs> twice <laughs> he used a weapon i'm baffled is that part of the folklore too? I mean, you obviously took some liberties. Take more. <laughs> Historically, in folklore, goat men wield giant long rifles. <laughs> this guy's Dude. gonna hate us. No, because yeah. I mean, what I are they doing in this goat? In this in this ram sheep human hybrid world where this race exists? Like, what are they doing? Are they riding quads? Living, like, what are they doing? Are they? They're shooting guns. The dude yeah, was an excellent shot. And the, how are they existing there, not being seen? Well, that's the thing. I think they're being seen because nobody freaked out. It wasn't like when the dude the, saw the goat true. man. As I said, time travel's possible there. So we yeah. uh, just believe believe in the craziest things on this beat up farm. <laughs> <laughs> The quote, what was the quote? It was, well, theoretically, they say it's possible. And so that was like, okay, is this foreshadowing? Like, theoretically, no, I just eventually, was... eventually, because if it is a transhuman, if this is anti transhuman agenda type of film, <laughs> is he saying that Wait, theoretically? <laughs> because, because, like, could this be? It's about a, playing God. Could this be a movie that's like anti playing God? Like, I think it was more stealing from nature. I think that was the thing. Cause I didn't see anybody really. Was anybody like make nobody made any, nobody was like hubris is, of Ram man is. Uh, I just, I, I just had to put in my phone that Jamie said anti transhuman. <laughs> like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> like, like, you know how, theoretically it, it will be possible one day to say um okay i want my baby to have uh blue eyes or uh fucking uh, ram horns <laughs> right like will it get to that point eventually you know they're growing they're growing ears on like the back of mice and shit oh so, i hope we go extinct so, and, hearts on, and hearts on pigs but yeah I, somebody will cross the line because i hope the world blows up way before then to be honest <laughs> It's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> or is it just like the site? Is this movie just about the the cycle of violence when it comes to the relationship in, with man and animals and nature? Like we were all lambs led to the slaughter in, in one form or another. And it's yeah, just that, uh, that to me kind of feels like what could be meaning behind it. Yeah. You know, just, you know, we're, we're all animals, you know, we're all trying to survive. I mean, was she more animal than you know it's i don't know it's it kind of there was so much not said and i like an intelligent movie you don't have to completely right yeah water but at the same time there's just so much not said not explained and not mentioned it was just 
odd in that in that part for me. But I yeah. Where does your where does your sequel point. where does your sequel go? Your sequel is her going like full Death Wish, like her like she invades their area and gets Ada back or Ada or whatever the 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 hybrid kid's name is. Like she goes in and she just fucking it's like taken. Um, I no, I just want to see that. I just want to see that thing go and slaughter every mother in Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> I just want. Hey, I want to here, see that thing go. kill, but not with a gun. <laughs> John Lampinski in the chat says, "Lamb too. Time will tell." <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's so bad. Uh, yeah, lamb too. Sheer terror. <laughs> uh, well, I think we nailed it. To be honest, I think well, I think between Jamie, uh, between all of our interpretations here, uh, I think we I think we hit it right on the head. This movie's not national, about much. National <laughs> Lamb. <laughs> oh. Lamb too. Shepherds die. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Ay, ay, ay. Well, on a scale of one to ten, I'll give this. I'm going to give it a four. I'm going to give it I, two for one of every finger that the lamb had. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll give it a. Yeah, I'm going to give it um I'm going to give it a 5. Cuz it was fair enough. It was almost cool for me. It was almost cool for me, but it it, it was just missing too many things. The payoff really really like fucking blue ball yeah. me there, you know? <laughs> yeah, that 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 got me. I'm like, "Oh, wow, this thing's just going to come and stomp some hit. So, wow, a gun. A really good aim. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because the producers must have been like, listen, man, you guys have been out here for six months. It's like the Finish Indiana the Jones fucking thing, movie. Like... <laughs> Finish this fucking movie and let's fucking go. They're like, what do we have for the for the kill at the end? Well, you got nothing. You got a blood pack and a fucking. No, imagine they were like, uh, well, we have this huge epic fight scene planned out. And then they're just like too long. Just pull out a gun and shoot him, dude. <laughs> Too late. All right. Well, yeah. 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 We did yeah. it. So you didn't have to, everyone. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, we took the hit. That was unlike, unlike other things where I go, man, why don't I get that? There's no FOMO here. Like, no, when, no, no. like when somebody says, Oh, I like, you know, this band and the band to me is like total garbage. I don't, I don't FOMO, but I wonder like, am I not hearing something that they're, they're hearing? If somebody goes, oh, I got to see this movie early or I got an advanced ticket or I got, I got a screener of like, I knew someone that got a screener of the other, I think it's an A24 movie where it's like something that having to do with King Arthur. And it was the kid, um, it was the kid from hereditary so i was like oh i want to see that so yeah, i had fomo like Ooh. oh i want to see that and we were on tour and it wasn't going to be streaming it was only going to be in theaters and i was like damn this dude got a screener and it's only in theaters and i didn't want to go have to leave the tour to go to get you know to go to see the movie in the theater because it's just a hassle right to get off especially when you're at those sheds to get yeah. out, like just getting in the backstage. Like if you took an Uber there from the airport, it's hard enough just to get in, let well, alone leave and get back in. Right. And then you're telling the Uber, like I'm at gate D row five or whatever, you know, and they're like, where? <laughs> well, but, uh, just for spoilers in general, that movie uh, is about just a guy who goes way too hard. Uh, the green knight shows up and he's like, yes. hey, if anybody, if anybody wants to, uh, like strike me with a blow, I'll return it in a year. So what he could have done is like flicked him on the shoulder, like punched him in the arm. He fucking chops his head off. It's like, and then that, and then that's that's the dilemma. So now he's like, oh well, the Green Knight's gonna want to chop my head off next year. You could have went way less, dude. 
<laughs> you know? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, 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 I've heard about the movie, but I didn't know any details of it. That's so. the premise. It's like an old King Arthur. It's a, like an Arthurian story. It's like been around for, it's, I think it's like one of the oldest stories written, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah. It's a, it's a which, fun- which that I would rather. Yeah. Believe me, I'll take this any day over a shitty remake. Believe me, I will. I just wish that if you're going to use the same tropes, and you're going to use folklore or make new for folklore. I just think it just requires a little bit more effort in the, the world building. That's it. I, I'm not saying I could do it better. And if you like loved this movie, which a lot of people did, I mean, I saw a lot of nine out of tens, eight out of tens. If you love this movie and you're not lying and you want to come on and do like a short, like 20 minute podcast for the, for the Patreon or like a 30 minute I'll give it another 30 minutes and maybe on like a long flight or a long bus ride. If I ever go on like a super long, crazy tour again, where it's like a eight hour drive, maybe I'll try to watch it again and see if there was other little things. Like, cause I did notice they put her in a blanket and it's a wool blanket. Right. And it's like, uh, or, or right. Or a wool sweater. (laughs) There's like little things that I'm trying to notice. Like, am I missing some shit? Just like when I would listen to, you know, some band, I see some dude who I think is a cool dude wearing a t-shirt of, and then I go listen to the band and I'm like, this fucking band sucks. Is this dude just trying to promote the band? Is he just trying to promote the band or does he like, or is he pretending to like the band? I don't know. Like Like a lot of the symbolism or whatever, it was just kind of lost on me. Yeah. I, I just, it's like some of it, maybe I didn't catch some of it, but also it just, it didn't vibe. And, I said there you you weren't attached to the characters at all. Even like even the lamb character, I didn't really have any sort of attachment. So it was yes, that was what, for me. What, what did what was what were the what were the memorable meaningful parts of their relationship? He didn't shoot her. Yeah, he, he didn't. They get, just sat and t- watched TV together. Like yeah, just a reg- I mean, you know, it's gave like, her a bath. Well, think of like, you know, it's like, think about it. When you have a kid who's like super young, you're not doing anything super meaningful. You're just raising it, you know? But, but there's, but was there points where they watched her crawl or they watched her take her first step or what, was there anything? I don't remember. No. Like it's already, I feel like yeah, the development you, was different, right? You didn't see any development. Yeah. There was, there were no milestones in the, in the the weird baby's life or anything. <laughs> so right, was, which which okay, if it's so if it is in the real world, a lamb matures very quickly within the first six months or whatever. So they could have this movie's pacing is slow, so they could have put some of that in. It, there was a lot of things that, that could have been done. I mean, it, it's not my vision, as you're saying, you know that wasn't my investment and all that but yeah it was for me i i just had a hard time getting into it like investing eat kebab uh negative i don't like lamb uh, i i I don't mind lamb but it's been a while since i've had but do you go like is there veal and lamb is there a difference like there like is lamb is all lamb lamb or is there sheep Yeah, veal, I believe, is isn't that just young cow? Yeah, but is that is yeah. that's what I'm saying? Like when you eat a lamb, is it are you eating a, an adult lamb or are you eating a sheep? I believe it's adult. Mutton lamb. is older lamb. Uh it's and it's like tougher from what yeah, I understand. That's for like stews and yeah. stuff like that, generally. So it's like lamb is usually gonna be young if you're eating it like a lamb chop. Young okay. comparatively to humans. I mean, I don't know what the uh, lifespan yeah. of lambs are, but I think they, they start oh. slaughtering them about a year. Yeah, this took a turn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fucking... Your dog grows exceptionally fast in a year. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, yeah, definitely. It's, the maturity rate is way different. And right. the slaughter rate. <laughs> well, yeah, the slaughter rate between dogs and goats is definitely very different. I knew I was in for a fucking a tough one when Howard goes, 
can't we just watch another Steven Seagal movie? <laughs> I'm like, no, no. Did he just really say that? I had a feeling this one was just going to be rough. And it was, it was rough. Dude. <laughs> so to me, it was almost good. Almost. The trailer looks so good. Yeah. The, the marketing leading up to this, man, they really pulled the wool over our eyes with this marketing. <sighs> and, it really and, did. And that's the thing. I, you know, not every movie has to appeal to my sort of thing. What I, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to move fast. It doesn't have to have a ton of action all that. That's fine. But it just too much unexplained and not enough payoff. So it, yeah, it just kind of made me, ah, uh, yeah. This feels unresolved to me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right. Well, we'll be back next month with another episode of the How Awesome Is This podcast, and I guess we might have to watch a Steven Seagal movie to. Oh boy! Cleanse yeah. the palate. The balance we don't have out. To. <laughs> I feel like after this movie, we should watch Speed with Sandra Bullock. Wow. Just for the title. We could tear and... that one apart. Yeah, I haven't seen that in so long. That is not a good flick. We will definitely have a lot of fun watching Speed. I Yeah, I can imagine it's it won't sit well. <laughs> Antonio Reyes in the chat has a recommendation. Let's hear it, bro. Spit it out, Junior. We cuz I was if we don't do Speed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dallas Boland says I'd love to have you guys tear apart speed what's up antonio how are you i'm doing pretty good how about you guys well pretty good after man. this movie we we need some coffee and i need yeah. to recover um uh, what's not a good recommendation um i don't know how you guys are gonna sit well with this one but blood in blood out who's in that oh yeah yeah okay but here's the thing Okay, so I've seen it. Great movie. But then I went on YouTube and I watched just the prison scenes. Someone edited oh, that too? every and I was like, wow, this is so much better <laughs> when they edited out everything. What? <laughs> yes, but, you can watch it. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta understand the uh, the storyline outside the world too, with the cousin, you know, trying to get off the drugs or whatnot. Even yeah, though, yeah, the yeah. prison scenes is pretty good, but, you know, it, it's a weird, you know, within, it's like, I think the 12-year process, and they do it, like, in three hours for, like, every four years or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that, that's a good suggestion. I would definitely watch that. And if anybody wants to go down the rabbit hole of the movie American Me, because we, we were going to do that as one of the first episodes of this podcast, but then I found out like so many people were killed because of the movie. Just, just, oh, yeah. just they fucked up in making that movie. They fucked with the wrong people making that movie <laughs> and it shit got dark real quick. Um, well, so the, I was like, they, let's, they let's portray not, the guy as like a rapist. Like they get like the head leader got raped and like I get the head cartel guy was like, no, that's, that never happens. You don't get raped and get the high position or like that. Like, it doesn't yeah, fit. it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. It turned yeah, out. And then bad. Danny, I think Danny Torrio went and, and like try and save the director's ass. And I guess the director took it as like, oh no, this guy, this guy's gonna come and kill me. And like he never met up with Danny Torrio. So yeah, he Danny Torrio yeah. tried to to he tried to uh, smooth it out. He tried to like help, but there was a hit out on um on. Uh, What's the actor's name? Almost Edward James. Almost there was a hit out on him for years because yeah. of that movie. Like it was wild, but but Blood and Blood Out we could probably do. That's a good one for sure. That's a classic. Um, but is. we but we might have to. Okay, Matt. Matt in the chat says, "What about Spawn, dude? I can't sit through Spawn again. I'm sorry. It was <laughs> it was bad enough the first time. Even and I was young." And I was like, this is fucking horrible. <laughs> How like that's like people should have got killed for making that movie. Like that was one that was that bad. <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah, it's 
that was that one was a little rough. It's been a long time since I watched it. And I remember buying the DVD and it just sat there. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't even think uh, a re-edit or a director's cut uh, could could. Uh, yeah, could, could fix that. Anyways, I got to run. Thank you all. We'll be back. I don't know, either with blood in, blood out or I mean, if you want to watch a real batshit crazy one, you could watch Hobo with a Shotgun. I see Paul here suggested a Rucker Hauer movie. Rucker Hauer's in Hobo with a Shotgun. Check that one out. If you you guys are going to if you thought fried berry was fucking bananas. (laughs) Watch uh, watch uh, watch Hobo with a Shotgun. All right. I got to run. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Produced by Brian McKay. Executive producers, Jake Olszewski, Ben Lee, AJ Lewis, Garrett Keeping, Adam Amico, Dan Smith, Nick Torito, JJ Hernandez, Joe Bartovic, Jason Jarvis, Chris Larice, Alex Smolin, Vivek Pawar, Todd McKee, John Blewett, Jesse DeGroote, Richard Miller, Kyle Marg, Nate Leffingwell, Morgan Costner, Mark Tag, Zapagor Waikato, Niall Scollard, Kathy D'Ambrosio, Justin Steven, Jack Flanders, the Pit Commander, Andy Wilson, Jeffrey Kuhn, Kimo Humalamaki, Jonathan Metis, Brandon Cooper, Matthew Jankowskis, Jamie Kutcher, Brian Undercoffler, Lee Walker, Matthew Thompson, Matt West, Ryan Maurice, Chad Green, Dallas Hendricks, Jacob Arensberg, Kenneth Moore, Kona Butterflies, Stephen Helm, Richard McIntosh, Jeff Stevenson, Ryan Williams, Larry Tooley, Dallas Bolin, Ryan St. Nathan Rex Madrid, Cameron Hendricks, Scandalous Official, Joe Motson. Let's Talk Resident Evil, Andrew Chase, Guy on the Couch, Chris Winchester, Antonio Reyes, Joe Otson, Dustin Stone, Lee Walker, Ryan Levson, John Hankis, Robert Bushaw, Troy Seal, Mark Horror Armenta, Patrick King, Jay Liberston, Nick Fowler. Hell yeah. Just a quick, sorry, just a quick outro. Hopefully you enjoyed today's show. And if you did and you want more of the movie podcast, you know, you can subscribe at gasdigitalnetwork.com and use the promo code JASTA. And also, I just want to say, if you're watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, hit the bell. If you're listening on iTunes, leave a review. I saw the Derek Wibley episode got us back in the charts. So people were enjoying it. Oh, yeah. So let's keep that momentum going. Let's get the movie podcast in the charts too. And uh, check out patreon.com slash Josta. If you, if you got an extra five or 10 bucks a month and you want to sit in on these shows, we are, I don't know. We watched the next one we're going to put out is, is Hulk Hogan. No holds barred. We watched that already. But that did was, we decide? That was a good time. <laughs> did we decide what we were going to watch after that? No, but I did send you guys a link to one of the strangest trailers I've ever seen. Charlie was all about it. What was it called? A pig. Oh, yeah, with Nick Cage. I'm about, yeah, I'll do that. Hell yeah. It's like John Wick with a pig. I I have no idea. I saw the trailer. The trailer is all I fucking know. It looks wild. That new Nick Cage movie looks wild where he plays himself. Oh, where it's like uh, the unbearable weight of excellence or some <laughs> shit like that. Yeah, it seems like it's going to be a good time. It's like uh, uh, John, like uh What's that, John Claude Van? Uh, John Claude Van Jones. It's like very yes. self-aware, like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let us know what you thought of today's show. Yeah, leave a review on iTunes. Leave a comment, or just uh, yeah, leave a comment on YouTube. And hit us up if you got any movie recommendations. Justin Show at Gmail. Also check out our web store, martyrstore.net, M-A-R-T-Y-R-S-T-O-R-E.net. Use a promo code Easter, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to expire very soon. Thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you to clocksandcolors.com, a great jewelry and sunglasses site. Remember, it's clocks and C-O-L-O-U-R-S.com. Use a promo code G-A-Josta. Also, thank you to indiemerchstore.com. Code is always JOSTA10. 
Get yourself some awesome merch. They got flip-flops. They got metal. I mean, you need a metal beach towel. The sun is out. Tank tops, guns out, all that stuff. IndieMerchStore.com, promo code JOSTA10. Last but never least, SeekAndStrike.com, promo code JOSTA10. We love Seek and Strike Records. Great roster of bands. So psyched to be playing with Orbit Culture at the Blue Ridge Rock Festival in Virginia. It's happening September 8th through the 11th. So buy your vinyl now. Have the band signed it at the Blue Ridge Rock Festival because they don't get to the States often. But also check out the new track from Upon a Burning Body. That's up on their YouTube page. And leave them a comment. Leave them a like and subscribe. Tell them Josta sent you. All right, everybody. Hope you have a great rest of your day or rest of your week or weekend or wherever you're listening to this. And uh, we, we will be back with Sergio Vega, formerly of the Deftones, currently of quicksand fame. Drink your coffee, do your pushups, listen to death metal. Bye-bye.